Three down, one to go, and a pretty happy looking Darrock. But it's not all over yet for Dead Draw. He still has at least one more to win in the semi final. And we're here to find out who he plays in that semi final, Darrock. You are absolutely right. We've got a bit of a uh, another good match coming up here again. Europe versus Americas once again, but not the USA as most of the Americas players of note are. We have Monsanto up now up against Pinas, an Italian player that I uh, didn't know all too much about going into this tournament. Uh, but I have to imagine, uh, as with all of the countries that have a, a slightly smaller scene compared to some of the uh, you know European titans like France and Germany in particular, uh, I have to imagine he's going to be at least in some way associated with a lot of the other Italian players, a very strong practice group who have been putting up uh, some pretty consistent results. You know, I'm talking about a letter who's had a pretty good win rate over all of the Masters tours, I believe. Uh, he's been kind of the standout for me recently. But Pinas, if he gets a win here, could put himself very much on the map in terms of one of these strong Italian players. Yeah, and a, a shout out to that community. They have been filling the chat up with support all weekend. They haven't just turned up for this today. They have been behind their man all the way. Let's have a look at what he has brought. And nothing too ridiculous, but there is the Stealth Rogue, which we haven't seen that much of in this tournament. Yeah, it definitely feels like most players have been deviating over to Secret Rogue, uh, with I think the main reason to go for Stealth Rogue being that players feel it's a little bit better against Aggro, Demon Hunter especially. Uh, but now that players have hit onto the Secret Rogue list with Spy Mistress, I think they've hit a very nice kind of hybrid between the two, which allows you to have the anti-aggro potential, but still go for the uh, disgustingly powerful things that Blackjack Stunner and Shadow Jeweler Hanar can allow you. But that is not to say that the C uh, Stealth Rogue does not have its benefits, a lot more damage in the deck overall. So I'd have to imagine for Pinas a much more aggressive game plan overall. Yeah, Monsanto bringing the Quest Warlock, which didn't seem to do that well in this tournament, really, compared to the big hype it has been getting. Has got his own bits and pieces in there, like the um, the Fell Bolt, and also, as he looks down the list, trying to remember, oh, the Sky General Crag is in that deck, mm. too. So, Monsanto doing it his own way, as he always does. And as we can see here, a good look at the Stealth Rogue. Fairly standard stuff. Uh, room for a demo uh, devoted Maniac in this list at the expense of, I suppose, a Sap, which is very uh, commonly included as a one-off. Uh, and I think overall, there's just not really too much to say. It's just a solid build of the deck here. And up against Demon Hunter, especially as this first matchup for Pinas, uh, I think he's in a very decent spot. I'm hearing a lot of players saying that they feel Rogue is in a very good spot against Demon Hunter. One of those players, interestingly enough, is Monsanto, who I think was boasting like a 9-0 and win rate in either GM or testing, I couldn't remember exactly, uh, with Rogue over Demon Hunter. So he might be a little bit scared here. Yeah, Monsanto, I think, has always been one of the best players around, but always very quiet and doesn't quite get the, the plaudits of some of the others. But I think this season in particular, despite not like setting the tournament on fire in GM, he just did well. He's got a solid stream going as well now. Um, and he seems to just be letting his personality out a lot more, the very deadpan personality he has. So I think he's a lot more comfortable this year. Turns up to all the events on time these days, and... Uh, fancy his chances to take this all the way. And let's face it, he is defending the honour of the GMs here. He's actually stayed in this tournament all the way uh, by choice to get to this final or this quarter yeah. final. So good for him. Even after a rough start, I don't know if he lost in the first round or at least very much towards the start of the, the tournament. And it takes fortitude uh, to carry on and still keep playing to the best of your mm -hmm. ability. But, yeah, that's thing that Demon Hunter does not want to see on turn one against it is Spy Mr. It just gives you that extra removal spell as everybody seems to refer to it as in, in the rogue deck. Mm. Oh, it just makes it so difficult. What's more difficult than one Spy Mistress? Yeah. Yeah, two is even worse. This is a pretty disastrous start for Monsanto because I believe that was actually a full keep that he went for with the uh, Bone Chewer Beaming Side. He can even War Glaze, which is a card that I still hear a lot of debate back and forth. Um, I was actually playing with uh, some of the players who dropped out a little bit earlier last night, a lot of the Danish players. Uh, and I was saying I want to try keeping the War Glaze against uh, Rogue, and I was shouted at for that. But here, Monsanto. 
clearly deeming it to be worth it. It is one of the most powerful cards in the matchup, and as long as you can spend your mana in the early turns, as Monsanto is kind of doing, it's uh, not a bad keep at all. Hang on. So you were getting shouted at for keeping Warglaives against Rogue. Yeah. You shouted at me for even considering keeping Altruist. I wasn't shouting at you. I was just offering an alternate caps idea. Lock, man. Your caps lock is broken. In a somewhat passionate fashion. Okay. Just <laughs> let me know where we stand, I guess. Yeah, okay. No, no, sure. no. no. I, I, I take it back. I think that Demon Hunter <laughs> is a deck that still deserves more exploration. I think even yeah. at the highest level, players are still figuring out the best way to pilot it in a lot of the different matchups. Rogue, in particular, is one that can be very counterintuitive at times. Case in point right now, Lorinda. Mm -hmm. Monsanto has to try and figure out what to do on this turn with an absolute pile of rubbish. Yeah, and having to use up a twin slice, which you just do not want to do, like, ever, basically. Especially going into Glaive Band, which will lose up the other half of it. Except he won't, because you'll play the War Glaives. But yeah, using up the slices is a real pain. You, you really want to treasure those, but you've got to get rid of something or you're just going to die. And yeah. not having done any damage by turn four is problematic. It is, uh, but this is the kind of hand for Monsanto that can very much lend itself to a more mm. mid to late game plan. Mm -hmm. uh, because this is how it always seems to go in the rogue matchup for me with the Demon Hunter is you rarely get super ahead on board at the start of the game. If you do, you just kind of win. Uh, and in these situations, the rogue looks like they're chugging along, they're doing their own game plan, but unless they get down an absolutely massive stonking Edwin or questing adventurer, uh, you just, you're not ending the game quickly enough at the rogue and the Demon Hunter can come back and deal absurd amounts of damage for which, again, the rogue has no response. The extreme lack of healing in the deck is its biggest bane in the matchup. And I do wonder, when you hear the developers talking about Demon Hunter in particular, uh, they all expected it to be a bit more of a mid-range, sort of longer-term deck. Mm. And more and more we're seeing players use those mid-range cards as the important ones, not so much necessarily the amazing starts it can get. Yeah. And I do wonder if there's just a deck waiting to be built that no one's bothered to build, because this is really good as it is, yeah. that doesn't start with all the one-drops and all the messing around. It just starts at five or something ridiculous. Oh, there definitely is. Like, I mean, I was taking a look at some of the Demon Hunter cards. You quickly realize, like, Coilfang Warlord, as just an example, is an absolutely bananas Hearthstone card. The amount of stats that you're getting with a rush and then a taunt all for eight mana is uh, truly something to be reckoned with, but it, it hasn't seen competitive play once over the entire Demon Hunter life cycle, even after three rounds of nerfs to the aggro playstyle. And so I think maybe with a little bit of help from future expansions towards Demon Hunter, we could definitely see uh, some alternate win conditions. So we are getting into those important turns now for this particular game of Hearthstone. And yeah, getting this flicked is obviously a horrible deal because losing the other one so much damage that you can't put into the face. Yeah. And this is just not going well at all for Monsanto. I mean, yes, to a point. Uh, I, I see that it's not going amazingly because he hasn't won the game yet. But this hand is still just really good. Spectral Sight now for zero mana. The second skull ready to be outcast next turn. Within the next three turns, there is an extremely high chance that we are looking at an incredibly powerful altruist turn, uh, which the rogue may just not have an answer for. This is kind of... it's not plan A, because plan A is kill them, but it's a very close plan B in the matchup. Yeah, and with that in mind, the, the obvious reply is if you think you might get behind to these million cards your opponent is drawing, mm. you kill them. So in return to that, Monsanto's got to make sure that that one avenue is closed. And I was actually going to go there with I wonder if he'll freeze things up. But... I say he doesn't, yeah. but he does go there, yeah. Doesn't want to risk the Shadow Step on the flick, obviously. I, I do like that he's developing the board here. The, the consideration at this point is always, uh, do I just hold back all these zero mana cards because they make my altruist better and better? But given that he doesn't have it in hand at the moment, and this is just a very powerful turn outright here, I, I really like his decision. Yeah, and after he's watched the rogue scramble to deal with this board, he could do it all again next turn. Yeah. Except with that magical eight mana, which means you can skull and play one of your good cards. And uh, Lorinda, I was going to say at first that he probably should have gone for a High Sparrow and Togwaggle at this turn. But then I realized, 
I'm an idiot. Why would you take three zero mana cards on the next turn when you could fully invoke your Galakrond and just take the full four? And you know who else just realized that? Monsanto. He is in trouble. Yeah, because this is an awful looking turn of Hearthstone if you're just not paying attention. Right, yeah. Yeah, yeah praising Galakron, what could that mean? But Monsanto, yeah, <laughs> he knows what it means. And a couple of Titanic lackeys in hand here as well. What are the odds? Why not? Toss them in. What could possibly go wrong <laughs> with the, the word Titanic? Nice. Took me a moment. Yeah, it was a niche joke. I only expect about one out of 30 people to get it. <laughs> wow. <sighs> okay, so... Pink Keep piling them on, up. yeah. Exactly. It's, uh, it's the double Titanic against Monsanto. There it is. Are you welcome? Uh, you know, people were going to be tweeting that. I made the joke first. Get over it. But now, for Monsanto, with uh, still a lot of strong follow-up here, we're looking, at, obviously, at Skull of Dan as a decent way to start drawing towards that altruist to swing the game back in his favor. Yeah, that's you say swing it back in his favor. That's like the only out. It's it's almost gone from right. swing it in your favor to this is your chance mode now because the yes. weapon coming up as well on the Galakond is point. the first that Rogue needs. Uh, yeah, war. and of course we're also looking at eviscerates in the deck for Pinyas because he's gone for the stealth version as opposed to the secret version. So a little bit of extra burst It'd just be lights out on the spot for Monsanto. And he should find that burst as well. This one thing this stealth deck does really well is just goes through drawing cards. Yeah, it's absolutely nuts when it gets going. Obviously, the downside of that is a lot of the cards are a little bit weaker. But... Hey, I got you, friend. Well, on Saturday, say okay. I think you got me, so prove it. Because if yeah, you don't okay. prove it, I'm going to have a chance of, of getting you back. Biggest development that he possibly can, but 5 plus 3 is 8, so only an extra 3 damage needed for Pinas on this turn to just win Evil on the spot. Close. Oh. Making as much room as he can in his hand, obviously. Mm -hmm. Galakron, and it's time! Did he find any damage? Ooh, not quite. This is uh, not the Galakron that he was looking for. A pretty weak outcome, I think it's fair to say, overall. No shield of Galakrons, no eviscerates, nothing to win the game on the spot, which gives, you know, a small but very real window for Monsanto to try and wrestle this game back. It does, and it's also given Pinyas a bit of a problem in terms of just... He wants to play some stuff, but he doesn't want to overdraw eviscerate in case yeah. it comes down to that. Obviously, looking for uh, Kobold Lucky would be a big deal as well, just to get a lethal going that way. But he's got to calculate what the most damage he can take is. And I tell you what, the answer, I don't know what the number is, but it's a lot. He might have to, like, trade into the cane, because if he doesn't, all of a sudden, Warglaves yeah. and swinging a bunch of times. These, fe uh, these uh, Battle Fiends are going to be a lot of damage all of a sudden. This is not nothing. For Monsanto. Enormous, but how enormous? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess if you're not killing them on this turn, even if you have I Beam plus Warglaves, it's still not quite enough to both get the lethal and stay out of range of the weapon at the same time. The reason I'm like. Yeah, because he can't actually attack into the minion with his face. It, he would I mean, die. I'm looking at like if he attacks it's twenty face, something, <laughs> attacks face with his sidekick, I beams his own sidekick, and then goes Warglaive's triple swing. Uh, that buffs each of the fiends up to five, so that's ten, thirteen, seventeen. Yeah, it's, and you've got some you know, buffs even if as you're well. You've got the fancy. chaos strike and the second yeah. strike and all that. Oh, another Ooh. I beam though will. Whoa, that changes everything. All of a sudden, it could just not be lethal. For Pinas on this turn. He does have lots of shots at getting a Kobold Lackey though. He's got double yep. Shallow Step in hand. That'll do a lot of damage on its own. 
Cobalt Lackey, Eviscerate, Cold Blood to go on his minion here. He can discover them off the Ethereal Lackey, he can get off the Hero Power, he can just draw Eviscerate from the top of his deck. But he has to get it now, because the counter lethal is very much there for Monsanto. And I wonder if he spent all of Monsanto's turn working out how to empty his hand. He started very quickly here. Because it's all like saying he needs Cobalt Lackeys, but he hasn't got anywhere to put them. Oh, he just rips a deadly poison, so he's nearly Still there. Still not lethal. One but now he gets um, Goblin Lackey as well now works, right? Oh! But he's still got to dump his hand in the right order. Oh, Cold crap. Blood gets it done. He does find that damage. Yeah. And well played because I think if he'd messed around and thought, how do I do this? He may well have started blundering with his hand full. And I think oh, yeah, he ran yeah, yeah. well for that turn. Yeah, I mean, for Pinus, you are so likely to win the game on that turn. You'd have to get staggeringly unlucky, especially given the 2 0 mana Cobalt. Uh, Two zero mana miscreant, sorry that you had in hand, in order to try and take the win. I think you just start doing stuff as he did, and you're very likely to take the win. Uh, mm -hmm. For Monsanto on the other side, I will say that I think his uh, slower approach from the mid game was probably correct at that point. You just have to hope that the rogue doesn't have the damage to kill you quickly enough, and that you have the time to find Altruis, or just uh, Warglaves into Overseer can be a huge swing onto the board in its own right. But he just wasn't given the time, and his uh, interesting and non-traditional mulligan of keeping the bone chewer sidekick and war glaives sadly did not work out for him this time not this time but um he did get off to a particularly terrible start partly as a result of that mulligan of course mm. and even if he managed to connect for three or four damage early on it could have been a different result but he did not and pinyas there showing the composure the reason i mentioned that is not because it was a hard turn but how many times have we seen a player first time in the spotlight just make a total mess of such an easy turn. It happens Many. a lot, so got to compliment them when it goes correctly. Yeah, a nice one at zero. He is in the worst position of the people chasing to get to Grand Masters out of the Europeans left in this event because he hasn't got any yeah. previous money. So he's probably going to need to win it, I think, to actually get in. Second place might be enough in some circumstances, depending who it's to. Yeah, it all gets very, very complicated for the EU GMs. It's, it's uh, or potential GMs, I should say. Sorry, it's always a bit of a downside being in the EU region, just because of how stiff the competition seems to be, time after time in these Masters tours. I wonder how far uh, Iraq is down. Like he's must be out of fingernails now, and sort of down to about the third knuckles <laughs> on his arms. Like he's probably chewed down to his elbow at this point, just hoping that all the people right. he likes and respects lose all afternoon. Yeah, I mean, I haven't figured it out. Like, if Pinyas wins, is he guaranteed out at that point? Or if he wins the tour? Um, so if Pinyas wins at the moment, if Warmer lost and Dead Draw lost in their next match, which one of them would, because right. Pinyas would have beaten them, then Ayuk could hold on in third place. Wow. Okay. <laughs> and Ayuk, I've got to give him his due. He sat in there yesterday and kept going and going. I think he got to six wins in the end. That's Which has just impressive. added a little bit of extra money, and that little bit of extra money might make all the difference. He didn't come into this, I, I got to talk to him a little bit before the event, mm. and he didn't come into this expecting to qualify. He came into this saying, I need more money. I, grow I, I want as much as I could possibly get. I'm not expecting to top eight again, because only yep. Dead Draw does that. That's not his fault. <laughs> um, but I'm expecting to get some more money to give myself the best possible chance of qualifying. He didn't just sit there and go, oh, look, I've got this great second place. Yeah. I'll be fine. He, he's added to it and he's worked hard. Sorry, he wanted that little rant because if it does go wrong for him, I think he needed a bit of a shout out. I mean, anyone who's got even close to qualifying to GM can hold their head high because it's a tremendous feat in its own right. But for this particular game, Lorinda, Monsanto already has got uh, had a very interesting conundrum. You know, these turn one and twos as Demon Hunter, especially on the coin, are so infinitely complicated. And uh, starting off with Hero Power Twin Slice does make sense. It gave him a lot of flexibility because we could have seen Boonshua coin uh, beaming sidekick on that turn look very respectable. It also means that there's the possibility for turn three Boonshua sidekick and then coin Warglaves which is what I have to imagine he's likely gearing up to. Yeah, and that would make sense, obviously, with the Bone Chewer to just sort of stem the gap. And I do think Monsanto's must rate Bone Chewer much higher than basically everybody else. Because he's not... He's still banning Warrior. Like, one of the reasons to play it is to leave Warrior up, and it can be a bit of a pain with all those skippers mm. going on. 
Yeah, true. But he's banning the warrior and still playing the bone chewer, and I think you see a lot less of that. Although Pinyas is also doing the same thing. Yeah, I don't know if I completely agree with that. I agree it's kind of it's nice against Warrior, but I think it's nice against Warrior because it's just a good card. You mm -hmm. you just play it in the deck because it does a decent job. And against Demon Hunter in particular, I find it's a very powerful card. It's kind of the best counter that you have to your opponent going Battle Fiend on one because it means they're in that position of like, oh, do I attack in and then hero power it? Then it's a 6-1 that's going to hit me. Do I just ignore it? Then it eats up my Battle Fiend. Things get really annoying, really complicated very fast. And I, I think it's good in this exact spot. Exactly. I think he's made a great use out of it here by sticking a really big annoying minion in play that is a, a pain in the backside for Pinyas to deal with. And how does he deal with it? Oh. I grow impatient. You want to spend time... I mean, maybe you do just spend the time drawing some cards here and not go down the cane route. And just waste a turn. I mean, Kane is a very nice draw here, as I will say. This allows him to get through this significantly more effectively and still keep a threat on the board. Yeah. And it's still, yeah, it's still a pretty chunky threat. I mean, anything that, that survives uh, in Demon Hunter Mirrors is a chunky threat because quite often everybody's right. on 26 health for the first six turns. Yeah. Okay, that that was not wrong, what Pinus did there at all. It was. I was going to say he tanked an extra three damage that was necessary. That's not the case because he gets himself an extra 1-1 one, one on the board in exchange for uh, three health uh, with the difference between four and one. Uh, debatable, I think, but probably correct when he's at such a high health total and ahead on board. Yeah, and so early in the game as well. Yeah. Um, so it's, that 1-1 one, one just got free reign. I think if, if, they, if you offered him the chance now, do you want another 1-1 one, one to pay another 3 health? He'd stick I it on the board immediately. Impatient. Interesting. I guess that 1-1s one, at this point are actually pretty well positioned, because if your opponent goes coin warglaves, are they really going to sink 3 damage into a 1-1? One, one? That very argu arguably just makes up the difference immediately with the right. extra 1-1 one, one that you have in play. So it's, hmm. I, I think the more I think about it, the more it's just kind it's of right. Uh, for definitely one of my favorite mirrors because usually you either want more minions or you want more health. Like if you're right. playing against control, you want more minions. If you're playing against the other way around, you want more health. But in this matchup, you want both. And so the balance is actually relevant, which is why you were bringing it up there, right? Indeed. Oh, but now for Monsanto, he makes the play of just completely missing out on the Warglaves on this turn in order to get down the uh, Frozen Shadow Weaver because of how powerful it is, freezing into exactly turn five to play around Warglaves and Glaivebound. But the I-beam off the top is just mm -hmm. the absolute dream there for Pinyas to be able to clear it off, keep board control, still be gearing up for a strong Warglaves into Overseer turn coming up. Yeah, on his miss a go turn, he still managed to have a, a real Hearthstone turn, so... Yeah, big deal. That's absolutely huge. <laughs> Altruist, no, <laughs> picked up for Monsanto, and that's, right. that's something that can work out really well. And also the Blowtorch Saboteur, I, I think this card is underrated. When we saw it in playtesting in the mirror, it just ruins the hero power for the whole game. Yeah, you, you really want to go for it a little bit earlier than this, I think, uh -huh. but... I agree, it's still just a 3-4, right? That's the thing that you have to remember with these tech cards, is even if they're not getting the perfect utility out of their battle cry, they're still strong. And it's so strong in the middle, just because it triples the cost of the hero power. Yeah. Love leaving up the 1-1 one -one here for Monsanto. He's, I would have to imagine, gearing up for an altruist turn coming up, uh, no yeah. matter what. So, so as it one turns one, out on this fine. occasion, with our amazing sample size, going for the extra 1-1 one -one a couple of turns ago was wrong. Because it's uh, going to get blown up by Altruist. Yeah, but it's still got in a bit of extra damage, right? Whereas it wouldn't have yeah, done the yeah. other way. So even then, the, the water is just its very, very murky in terms of whether this is good or bad. Huge but what isn't murky turn. is this turn. Yeah. Complete clear with on the one drop being found. Do you see what must be done? <laughs> Ah. The fires 
definitely not what Pinos wanted to see, but it's the bailout here for Monsanto uh, to be able to try and swing himself back into this board. A threat that must be answered. And Pinas, again, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, still has the answer with the Warglaives to clear everything up. Yeah, and he's still got that slight health advantage and that slight tempo advantage. It's not a mm. lot, but with the Overseer next turn, it will become a lot. Yeah, that is where things start to get very scary for Monsanto. Uh, the ways that, that could be cleared up, of course, is just a uh, metamorphosis off the top so he can threaten mm -hmm. two turn lethal. Then board control doesn't matter how much Pinus has. That still stands with this Chaos Strike if he wants to try and rip one off the top. True. He wouldn't be able to get the metamorphosis, but I guess he might actually just set up lethal anyway then. I grow impatient. Yeah, that's, that's where I was going with that one. Right. Just use it as a fireball and not a pyroblast. It's fine. So the two plays that I'm seeing... Here, well, the different ways you can go about this is just go for Cane and Blowtorch and then mm -hmm. trade the Cane in order to mitigate damage. Or you can go for Chaos Strike, which gives up a little bit of development with the Blowtorch, but has the potential upside of finding I-Beam as a huge uh, draw at that point. In the end, he decides it's not worth the risk. It's a very small chance that he hits the I-Beam and instead just develops a medium-sized board. Yeah, these things both go face because they have to be dealt with. So six yeah. damage is going to be done by these minions this turn. Actually, it's not because he's only got one charge left. I think he had two charges left. So actually, I grow. yeah, he shakes his head. It's actually really nasty. Yeah, it was it was just a good play there for Monsanto. You know, even talking about the I beam there, because the cane can trade in, the I beam wasn't even that necessary mm -hmm. uh, because he, there's pretty much no instance where he dies here. And so Pinus, given that he now has to clear the board, is like you said, going to be tanking six mm. damage, going down to seven. He's almost just dead on the backswing. And what do you do? He can't play. I mean, the obvious chance is to do everything, but the saboteur has still managed to be useful because to. Do all three things he wants to do is nine mana. Mm-hmm. Instead of the lovely seven that it should be, where it'll be a very Oh, yeah, easy of course, turn. the hero power, right. <laughs> I wasn't even looking at that he, being yeah, three. Yeah, you that already. to take down the three, four, so... Oh. I mean, you have to hero power this turn. It's way too clean. The blowtorch can just stay behind. You're not setting up lethal, but you're setting up draws for lethal as Pinus. And Monsanto misses on the damage to close out the game. One off lethal, Lorinda. One damage from closing out the game. And now what do you do? I mean, there isn't much you can do. Does your opponent have five? Why did your I opponent think for so, so long on an obvious turn last turn? What is that other car in Pinyas's right. hand? If Monsanto knew he'd just go face and close his eyes on the draw but he doesn't know. So he needs to work out how often this goes more than one more turn. If the game is always decided next I turn, he just swings face. I, I mean to be... Mm, I, yeah, I guess it gets more complicated because you can go for the Battle Fiend and the Warglaive Fall on this turn. Sure. He could just go Battle Fiend, swing, clear everything and still get a damage through to face to set up lethal for next turn. Yep. That's where he's going with the line. Yeah. No reason Great. not to, I guess. That there is no damage. Glavebound is lethal. Metamorphosis is lethal. It's but such he needs a huge pick-up of Pinyas. Stress starting to show. Oh! <laughs> oh no. The freeze is so close, Neil. He can freeze the face. Stop the damage from coming in there, but the Battle Fiend, the measly seeming 1-2 here, buffed all the way up to 5 damage, will just close things out. I grow and that's something impatient. that is a gut-wrenching miss for Pignas here. And I think, just by looking at him in the camera, he's just taking that time to steady himself down a little bit, like yeah. nervous-wise. Because he knew he'd lost, he, he's, he sort of hunched over the computer, just like, look, you're one all in a quarter-final. Pick yourself up and get on with it. And I think that's what he's saying himself. I mean, it's one of those things as well where as a newer player, one of the things I often hear them say is, 
my attitude going into this is I'm just never going to concede. No matter how bad it looks, I just don't concede because maybe I'm missing something. And hit there, he was just going, right, if I freeze the minion and play the... Uh, and play out the uh, blowtorch there. If I freeze the face and play the blowtorch, if I hear a power and attack in, just any possible combination, even though he knew it was over. And in the end, he just sees there is literally nothing he can do, no matter how hard he tries. And so it does mean that we're going to one game apiece. The Demon Hunter having one now for Monsanto, but the Rogue left on his side. Uh, I'm not entirely sure who that benefits more. I'm Probably go out on a limb and say Monsanto. Uh, oh, sorry, uh, Pinas, because he's yeah, one with the slightly Pinas. more difficult deck to win with outside of the Demon Hunter. And yeah, like uh, your Demon, Demon Hunter, Hunter Warrior, one gets banned and one wins. Exactly. <laughs> so, actually, Monsanto's achieved nothing in all that. Um, obviously, that's not quite true, because 2-0 would be a lot to come back from. But the Rogue having the win is, is still advantage Pinas at this point. It is indeed. Uh, the Warlock, however, could be a tough point for Monsanto. We're seeing players say that it's favoured versus Demon Hunter. We're seeing what? players say it's worse no. against Demon Hunter. Up against the Druid, however, I think it's a tough matchup for sure. And uh, even for the Rogue, while I think it's not a disastrous matchup anymore, this hand already for Pinas is looking strong. Oh, and that was, you said that, I think, before we saw the Clovis Swarm. Very strong. So it has gone ridiculous. He needs Flick. He doesn't know it. That's the problem for Monsanto. But he actually needs Flick right away. Mm. There's two boards coming. And if he spends too many resources killing off the first one, there's no way he's getting rid of the second one. And the problem Rogue has in this sort of situation is it can't populate the board with enough stuff to deal enough damage. It's not like the warrior where it just tries to kill you. Right. We've just got all this rubbish to mess around with. Maybe you can get enough minions down to take off some of the swarm. That, that's one of the things I realized, actually. I, I like that you bring that up because, uh, you know, the two avenues that you have to victory as Rogue, uh, well, I should say, all avenues to victory as the Rogue rely on questing an Edwin in some form, but they just don't have to come down in the early game. You do often have the time to get down enough minions, lackeys, removal spells in order to not die to the Glowfly straight away. <laughs> What I will say, however, is that it has to come down before turn three when Pinyas is able to go for the glow fight. This is looking nigh comes. on unbeatable for Monsanto. Yeah, you're talking about those avenues, but all these avenues lead to El Paso. Oh my pretty short. And there's another one where that came from. Exactly. It's not, not going to be. to matter. Yeah, Pinas is not going to be going for El Paso for a few turns with power uh, plays this powerful. Oh, he's going to be able to buff them as well. This is just nonsense. Yep, it's one of I those think games. I'm going to have to admit that Druid is looking like the third best class in tournament play at the moment, and it, that pains me a lot. Monsanto has something here, though, right? He's got secret into double sap here, which allows him to clear off the board. He's not just dead straight up. He has the slimmest mm -hmm. of chances, uh, just trying to find any way that he could potentially wrestle this back. So, also, if this wasn't going to go stupid the next couple of turns, which it actually just is, putting those glow flies in hand is really irritating when it happens to you as the druid. True. Because your hand fills up for the rest of the game, and you just need to get them out of there, because you're you're constantly trying to overflow and do all that good stuff. So, although Monsanto probably knows he's in terminal trouble here, that is definitely the right thing to do. Just get all that gubbins loaded up. Three mana, two twos are not the druid friend. Vate Glowfly would give one, two, three, four, five uh, Glowflies there, which mm. seems fairly strong to me. Uh, I guess the main fear is, of course, that if you go for that, then Soul of the Forest would be pretty bad if they die off. Um, but the main benefit is you're going at the turn before Flick Skyship can come down, and you're very likely to then just kill them the turn after. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's, good. it's good that you're looking at ways where this couldn't ever go wrong, don't I mean, having said that, right, he you doesn't have, to, have Savage Roar in hand. Uh, so if he does go Vate Glowfly and doesn't win and Flick comes down, a lot of ands, yep. a lot of ifs here, it's, you know, possible okay, for Monsanto to maybe swing this back. I'll back you up that he has done it with the no ramp route. 
And there is the flick. Yeah, I mean, he is still going to have to get through a, uh, a Soul of the Forest as well if he wants to get there. Yeah. So it's still looking bad. Something about this meta that, that I have noticed watching so much GM and watching these, this particular tournament is there are a lot of wins that you think are 0%. Mm -hmm. Like the, the, the traditional, I think he's definitely lost here with wins. There's quite a few ways of setting yourself up to get lucky. If you just hang in there and, uh, and keep plugging, you do find them sometimes. Yeah, I mean, Flick's not even not a possibility him. anymore because he's just dead on board yeah. uh, if he does yeah. that. So he has to go for, I don't even know, man, uh, backstab, uh, you know, infinite shadow steps and somehow getting a Cobalt <laughs> Lackey. Not even sure at this point. It's uh, basically right. Mm -hmm. Pilfer, get yourself Explosive steal trap. seven minions. Explosive trap. That's nice. Yeah, I think that was like the out potentially from his side of the board. But there we go. Pinyas wins games two as was very much expected after that starting hand. And I've got to say, well, Monsanto really didn't have anything to do there. Nobody does disappointed quite like our Monsanto. He just really makes you feel like you've personally upset him just for witnessing him losing. I am going to tell the story that I've never told on stream about Monsanto, about Oslo. The best story. So... Through circumstances, Monsanto missed check-in at Oslo two years ago. Yes. And it was sad. It was genuinely upsetting. It was, was the way sad. it worked out, out. Just everything conspired to mean he couldn't play the tournament that he was sat at watching start. And we're casting it in this sort of open-air room. And Monsanto walked past. And I think both of us just wanted to start crying <laughs> immediately. <laughs> He's I mean, the it's... saddest figure you have ever seen in your life so i i have never seen despair quite like that to be perfectly honest we were just sitting there in the casting desk and he was just the most defeated man i think we've ever seen having flown literally across the world just to sit and watch other people play hearthstone and uh, the reason he was so days. distraught is because was he felt and again it wasn't his fault the way things transpired it looked like his fault it just wasn't but he was really good that he'd let his team no. down who had paid for him to go no. and You're do all that he's, he's a lovely guy despite the fact you know, his, his dry sense of humour might lead you to think he's a little bit sarcastic at times. Who knew? Hearthstone mm. kind of sarcasm. Oof. But anyway, he may end up being a lot happier today if he can get these two wins, because he is representing all of the Grandmasters in this top eight and trying to get that win. Indeed. And now, for the Rogue up against the Demon Hunter, this is the matchup that Monsanto had to face earlier. Didn't go his way, but now... He's able to uh, face it from the other side. This should be a little bit nicer for him uh, with the Rogue up against the Demon Hunter. He himself has boasted very, very positive stats as the Rogue up against the Demon Hunter. And therefore, I think this should be very much the chance where he can turn this around and get through to the semi-finals. Yeah, I'm always a fan of seeing people who have sort of tweeted that sort of thing out and then watching how they try and do it. Because it usually means they do it slightly differently to everybody else. They've unearthed something subtle that helps them do it better yeah uh, but he also tweets how rubbish drip it is and he just lost to it in four turns so that's not going to be happy for him oh mm. this is some hand for opinion yes it is I, I like that he held back on turn one as well i will say battle fiend into sidekick on two makes a lot of sense because you're less vulnerable to the backstab of course um being able to clear it off instantaneously mm. Yep, that's what he's going for. I'm fascinated to see how this Hana is used, or if it is used at all. Okay, so it's going to be used, you would think. Mm -hmm. Oh man, it's tough, isn't it? Because he has the uh, really difficult alternate play, of course, of just going backstab, hero power, and killing off uh, the battle fiend very, mm -hmm. very cleanly. But then, of course, your questing adventurer becomes weaker. This hand needs a little bit of extra value. You know, being able to go ambush on this turn into right. Netherwind Portal, for example, on the following turn is a great way to spend your mana. 
uh, does look a lot more tempting. And interesting that he goes for the redemption. Obviously, pressure plate was an uh, option that looks appealing there for later on. Yeah, I mean, I mean, the Netherwind portal for me was just a way to like spend his mana next turn and have it be yep. decently powerful. Uh, the alternative uh, thinking here, I would imagine, is that questing adventurer allows him uh, with redemption to more likely stick it on board. But my oh my, is this not going to be working out for him at least at the moment? Yeah, I think Monsanto's main hope here is that Pinyas runs out of steam. Mm -hmm. Demon Hunter, I mean, hoping that against Demon Hunter you're in a bad spot, right? Because they don't run out of steam very often. But if the five drops are not forthcoming, yeah. maybe Monsanto can get a foothold in this one. I really like this turn from Pinyas as well. I think playing around both the secrets there makes a lot of sense. It means that next turn, he's got Sator Overseer, Second Slice, plus Battle Mage. He can easily take out the Ambush Poisonous minion if that is the secret. And at that point, if you're giving your opponent an extra spell, sorry, an extra couple of cards off of the Dirty Tricks, it's not the end of the world. Yeah, and that's the problem. Dirty Tricks is not a card that I am a fan of. It's got a very good win rate in the deck. You need to play it in the deck, but sometimes it's just like garbage because it's so slow. And you are allowed to defend that as a rogue fan. You are allowed to be in disagreement with me. Thanks. Uh, don't worry, I was well aware I'm allowed to disagree with you. <laughs> it's been known, right? Just... just... Making sure you remembered. Uh, <laughs> if I, I've actually not been a fan of the secrets in Rogue since Bamboozle was taken out. Not because I like Bamboozle, but I think it just makes it so much easier to play around the remaining secrets. That's true. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, I, I have long been a supporter of Stealth Rogue, but I will say that having sat down with the players this weekend and actually oh, had a hard test he's had enough. of it... I mean, whatever I'm saying doesn't even matter anymore. Monsanto just throws it down at that early point, and Pinyas, I'm sure just as surprised as we are, is going through to the semi-finals. What? That, that was not the end of the game. Yeah, uh, that was a pretty and this surprising is the end there. Uh, I will say, you know, Monsanto was looking very, very unlikely to win there. Uh -huh. um, you know, we've had a couple of surprise concedes at this point from the players where it didn't seem quite over. Generally, it's been from the players with less on the line. Uh, obviously, for Monsanto, already a grandmaster, so that's not on the table for him. And yeah, I think so he doesn't he's... need the $30,000. Oh, uh, yeah. And I, I think, you know, say what we will about uh, Monsanto. He's a cynical player and also a very good Hearthstone player. And even if we could try and spend 20 minutes coming up with potential ways for him to come back in the game, he's tested that matchup enough and, in his estimation, it's just over, which means, Lorinda, we are left now with our solidified semi-final matches to come up in just a few moments' time. And they are going to decide who our future Grand Masters for Europe are going Ooh. to be. And there are no Grand Masters left in this tournament, so we need some new ones who can maybe carry the torch a little bit in these big events. Uh, let's not mess around for too long, I feel, here. I think people are probably looking forward to seeing what happens. I think almost all of the fan favourites are still in as well, uh, especially that second semi-final, Pinyas versus Dead Draw. I think there may be a little bit of YouTube chat excitement when that one comes about. So anyway, I'm going to stop prattling on and we'll see you in just a few moments.